we get a peek at Starship HLS's control panel. 1.5 million users join the Starlink hype train. Dragon has some pretty dope missions coming down the line. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. SpaceX continues in their quest to reboot Starbase after the recent Starship test flight. Focusing on things like installing pretty much a new foundation and other stuff that Elon spoke about that we covered last week, so I'm not going to go any further into details. Just know progress is being made as they push forward to attempt number two. Oh, and that Starship heat shield seashells have been washing ashore on South Padre. But what I want to bring your attention to today is a Twitter post made by NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate. Silly bureaucracies in their lengthy titles. She was in SoCal recently visiting Artemis supply vendors, including SpaceX, and uploaded a photo of herself sitting in front of a mock Starship HLS control panel, much like Dragon's. Zoom in a bit and you can see the heads up display on the right there, which includes a nav ball, engine status indicator, telemetry, and overall vehicle information. Center screen is an overhead simulation of Starship with fins circumnavigating the moon. And on the far left is a reflection of Guy waiting impatiently for his turn. We'll come back to more Starship news in a minute. On Wednesday afternoon, Falcon took 51 Starlink satellites to the second orbital shelf from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base, California. Twas clear skies for the rocket, using a thrice flown booster that landed for its third time on the autonomous drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, bobbing on the Pacific Ocean. In other Starlink news, priority plans are now available for business and high demand users at 250 Musk bucks per month for one terabyte, doubling the cost for those who want to double their allotted amount. SpaceX celebrated reaching 1.5 million customers over the weekend. Brightline has become the first passenger train in the world to bring Starlink service to its customers. The company operates in Florida as an inner city rail route between Miami and West Palm Beach. <laughs> oh, I gave a shock. As mentioned last week, Crew-6 did end up relocating their capsule at the International Space Station on Saturday to make room for CRS-28 in June, the ride lasting all of about 40 minutes. SpaceX and VAST have announced this week that Falcon will lift the world's first commercial space station to Earth orbit no earlier than August of 2025. According to SpaceX, quote, Haven 1 will be a fully functional, independent space station and eventually be connected as a module to a larger VAST space station currently in development, unquote. The company's long-term goal is to build a 100-meter-long multi-module spinning artificial gravity space station to be launched aboard Starship. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Monday, Rocket Lab successfully launched their 36th Electron rocket from New Zealand to deliver NASA's Tropics mission, titled Rocket Like a Hurricane. The Tropics constellation will monitor the formation of cyclones and provide updating observations of storm intensity. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Thank you supporters for supporting and members for membering. Do have a nominal weekend and until next time, Godspeed.